Hi, this is Adam Martin. I'm the Digital Bureau Director for Capital News Service. And today I'm going to show you guys how to make um, some charts, maps, and basic graphics using an online application called Data Wrapper. I'm going to run through a couple slides real quick, and then we will um, just jump into doing some, some hands-on exercises to create some simple graphics using Data Wrapper. This first slide sort of shows the Data Wrapper interface. Um, and um, we'll go through all this in detail in just a minute. Um, first thing I want to show you guys is just some different types of graphics that, um, that you can create with Data Wrapper. Um, you can create charts and maps. Um, this is what a Data Wrapper graphic would look like on the page. All Data Wrapper graphics are responsive, so they're going to look good on desktop and also on mobile without really any additional work from you. Um, they also look great on the page if they're going to be printed. There's different templates or themes as they call them in Data Wrapper, so you can get different sort of looks and feel from your graphics. Um, so let's take a look at a few different graphic types. This is sort of the Data Wrapper menu and it shows you all the different charts and map types and tables that you can create using the program. Um, so first we'll look at charts. Here's a basic line chart. Um, and you can see that right off the shelf, all graphics and data wrapper have really nice interactivity where you can highlight different elements and pull um, specific data points right out of the graphics. Um, this is a bar chart or a column chart that lets you sort of cycle through the different data points that are included in the data. Um, this is what's called a dot plot. Here we have just some donut charts, which are sort of um, very similar to pie charts, and this, these are called um, multiple donuts because they're showing several donut charts next to each other for comparison. Here we have a scatter plot. Um, so that's charts. Data Wrapper also has lots of great map features. This is a chloropleth map, and we'll create a really simple chloropleth here in a couple minutes. Um, you can see that Data Wrapper contains lots of different maps already included in it, um, and we'll look at some of the maps for Maryland that come preloaded in the, in the software. Um, you know, it has over a thousand maps already preloaded in it. Here's a quick sample of them here. So you can also, if you have your own map um, in the proper format, um, which is in this case is GeoJSON, you can also upload it right into the program. Um, you can create cartograms. You can create symbol maps. You can also create simple locator maps. To create locator maps, um, you just add locations inside the program and it will go ahead and put dots and let you add um, pop-up windows. So you can also create um, shaded relief maps to give more of a 3D feel. And that's maps. Next we'll look at tables, right? Tables are a nice graphic that sort of let people explore, you know, the data in more of a raw form generally, but also you can use tables to um, sort of combine a several, several different types of graphics together as we see here. Here we see using color coding on tables. You can also upload your own images for tables to create a look and a feel, something like this. Um, and all graphics in Data Wrapper are optimized for mobile. They're responsive, um, which means that they're going to work on both desktop and in mobile, which is really important in the modern web environment. So once you create a graphic or a map in Data Wrapper, you have a couple ways to export it. And we'll look at that when we create our own maps. Um, but in general, we, we see the options here. So for online, we want to copy out an embed code, which you see up at the top of this slide. And you always want to choose the responsive iframe option. And you can copy and paste that right into the Capital News Service WordPress site, right directly into your story. And it will appear wherever you paste it. You can also export your graphics as static files, so as a PNG, a PDF, or an SVG, um, if you wanted sta static graphics for print or to send along via email. Okay, so let's go ahead now and create a few simple graphics in Data Wrapper. Um, you know, everybody at CNS can have free access to Data Wrapper. All you have to do is send me a Slack message or an email and let me know that you want access. 
and give me your email address and I'll sign you up um, for the Capital News Service Data Wrapper account and you'll have um, you know unlimited access through us as long as you're a, a student here. There's also a free version that you can sign up for but for any graphics that you make for Capital News Service we're going to want you to use our account um, because we not we're, we don't have the same uh, limitations as you're going to have with a free account, right? We can we have a lot. It's a, it's a much more powerful account, so we want you to use ours. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do today is we're going to create a bar chart. You can see um, if you want to create a new chart, a new map, or a new table, you do so right up here. Um, you can also always see all the charts that have been created so far by clicking Team Charts, and that's going to show you all the charts that we've created for Capital News Service so far. Let's go ahead and create a new chart and we're going to create um, a bar chart. So the first thing that you need to do to create any graphic is you need to upload your data. So for our bar chart, we're going to use some data that I have over here in a spreadsheet that looks at hot weather deaths um, in Maryland and specifically in Baltimore City over the last few years. So here I, here I have data from 2012 to 2018 looking at the number of heat-related deaths in Baltimore and the number of heat-related deaths in Maryland overall. So you can see, for example, that in 2012, there were 46 heat-related deaths in Maryland, and 13 of those were in Baltimore. Um, in 2018, there were 28 overall, and 13 of those were in Baltimore. So what this data ultimately tells us is that you know, sort of a disproportionate number of heat-related deaths are happening um, in Baltimore, right? Because Baltimore is a very small portion of the um, of the state of Maryland. Okay, so what we want to do is we're just going to copy and paste our data here right out of the spreadsheet. We can paste it right here into Data Wrapper, and that's our first step. Data Wrapper will let you upload um, your file also or import right from a Google Sheet or link to an external data set. But in general, I find it easiest just to copy and paste your data right in here. So you can see it came in, it looks a little funky, but once we hit proceed, the next step is to check our data and we can see um, it brought it in correctly, right? We've got our year, we have our values for Baltimore and our values for Maryland. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so since this looks good, um, you know, I should point out there's a, you know, you can also add columns to your data down here and you can also transpose your columns, which means swapping rows and columns. So if we click that, um, it'll set it up in a slightly different way, which depending on what kind of chart or graph you're trying to create uh, might be important. But for our purposes right now, um, this is how we want our data to be structured. So we'll just click um, proceed and um, looks like I'm getting a text up here with some pictures. Sorry about that. Um, and so on the next screen, what we get is um, options for the different charts that we can create with our data. So right off the shelf, it gave us sort of a line chart, which is okay, right? It's showing us um, Maryland in this line and Baltimore in this line. Um, but I don't, I don't think that's quite what we want to do. Let's try some different bar chart options for this. Um, so for instance, maybe we want to make what they call a column chart. Right? And what this is going to do is going to put our data on two different tabs. So in the first tab, we're, we're seeing um, Baltimore. And on the second tab, we see Maryland. We can also look at it as a grouped bar chart, which means um, right, it's grouping the data together. I don't think that's super useful. You know, a couple other options that might be interesting. We have um, some stacked bars, which is showing our data that way. So each year it's bringing together the data. But I think for this particular data, the best thing to do is for us to look at this. It's grouped bars. Because in this case, right, we can see the Baltimore and the Maryland numbers side by side to easily compare them for each year. Okay, so I think that's the um, chart type that we'll go ahead and, and keep. So next we're going to go over to our Refine tab. So this tab is going to give us lots of options to sort of refine and customize our data. So first, you know, if we didn't like the year as our label, we could change it, but we don't have really any other options here um, or any other options under Groups to customize our axes. Um, we could resort the bars, but we don't really want to do that. Um, so, you know, one thing we can do is we can change the alignment of the labels. Perhaps we want the labels to go left or right. Not much of a difference there. Um, 
could display the labels on a separate line. Um, this is also giving us options to show the values. Right now we are showing them always. We could also have it so the values are just shown on hover um, or never. We'll just go ahead and keep it always. We could also change it so that our values are shown on the right or on the left. Um, and if we wanted to, we could change the um, format that our numbers are being shown in or also the format that our dates are being shown in. But all that's fine for right now. Um, and if we take a look at our graphic, right, we can see how sort of data wrapper has some nice interactive, you know, interactivity built right into it. So we can select Baltimore, Maryland to see the different um, values under there, we can move around, um, sort of see the different values, and it'll automatically highlight different groups for us. So if we come down, um, we can also select grid lines, and it'll give us some grid lines, which I don't think we'll use right here. Um, we can change the colors, right? If we click on base color, it'll let us select just like a single value and it'll create some, some colors for us based on that. Um, you know, we can also individually customize the colors. So if we wanted to select what color we wanted for Baltimore, we could choose a color up here. We could also use the slider to select the custom color um, or use a hex value. Let's say we wanted to use a you know, a specific color. There we go, and we could do the same with Maryland, and just really customize everything to however we wanted it, it to be. Um, okay, so here we have an option to show our color key or not, which is basically our legend. We definitely want to show that. Um, it will give us an option to put some bars in the background or to separate the rows with the dotted line um, just to help break up the data a little bit. We'll go ahead and keep that. We also have an option to show slightly thicker bars if we want to, or just the default thin bars. We could also change the range, which in this case with this data doesn't make a whole lot of sense to do. So we'll just go ahead and leave that there. Uh, you can see down here, right, we have, we can change the size of our chart. So we want it to be 800 by 600. Um, for our purposes, you know, that doesn't make a lot of sense because we're going to export responsive embeds, which means it's going to resize itself to the size of the screen, so the size doesn't really matter much. That would be more important if you were going to export print versions. There's also a colorblind check down here, which will show you how people with different sorts of colorblindness would um, see our, our graphics. So you can see, you know, people who have this type of colorblindness, this color scheme wouldn't be very good for them. So this probably wouldn't be a, a great color scheme to go with, ultimately. Um, so in fact, maybe we'll go ahead and, you know, customize the colors. We can just reset them and go back to sort of the default colors, or we can choose some of the, um, you know, ha have data wrapper choose a couple colors for us.